the launch of a new people carrier isn't the most exciting event in the automotive industry. But maybe this one from BMW is more exciting than the MPV norm that we've gotten used to. This is the BMW U06, the second generation 2 Series Active Tourer. And even though it looks quite different to the vehicle it replaces, it is actually just a very strong evolution of that model. It has a bold new face, electrified powertrains, a very fancy new interior that is almost devoid of buttons. And even though it is not branded a crossover or SUV, it is quite a tall vehicle with a ground clearance that is actually bigger than on some models that are actually sold as crossovers. And in today's video, I'm going to show you around this vehicle, show you the interior, which is hugely interesting, important, and it foreshadows what BMW will do with its entire lineup in years to come. We're also going to talk practicality because this is the reason why you buy a 2 Series Active Tourer like this. And we're also going to talk tech, prices, desirability, and um, whether or not you should get one of these. Oh yeah, and I get to drive it, of course. In true Eastern European fashion, I'm squatting next to a new BMW. This one has a less polarizing face than some other new BMWs, even though this one also has a huge grille, a huge octagonal grille. However, if you look at it closely, you will notice that this upper part, it never opens, and the lower part is almost always closed. And even this lower part has active flaps. So if the vehicle doesn't really need any cooling, it's going to close off both the grill and the lower intake as well. The new 2 Series Active Tour comes with LED headlights as standard. So thankfully no more horrible halogens on BMWs, which is something I really don't like seeing. My tester is the luxury model, so it gets these very nice satin details here, like this uh, slat here, this blade. Let's also look under the hood. So my tester is the 220i, which for this new generation, for the U06, it has now been made a three-cylinder. You can see it rattling away there. It makes about 150 horsepower on its own, but the 220i is only available as a mild hybrid, so it gets just over 170 horsepower. We'll talk more about the specs when we get inside the vehicle. But the fact that this is a 20 badge BMW with a three cylinder engine, I think also foreshadows what the manufacturer has in store for its lineup until it eventually goes fully electric. From the side, there's no mistaking this vehicle for anything other than a people carrier. It's not trying to be a crossover, it's not, well, it doesn't look particularly high off the ground, but with just over 17 centimeters of ground clearance, well, it's higher off the ground than many crossovers, many vehicles that are actually sold as crossovers. My tester has these optional 19-inch individual line wheels. They are two-tone with silver and black. They are quite opulent and they make this vehicle look quite expensive maybe even more so than it is. This car also has flush fitting door handles, but unlike the ones in the iX where you just put your hand here, press a button and it pops out electrically, here you pull up on the handle. And unlike some other manufacturers who um, force you to do some kind of uh, weird hand gesture to open the door, this one from BMW, it is flush fitting as the industry demands nowadays, but it's, just about as easy to use as any door handle you've ever used. There's really not that much to talk about when it comes to the side of the of the 2 Series. The most striking detail probably is this line that goes uh, up and then fades into the C-pillar. But other than that, it's quite a simple car and it's maybe all the better for it. Being a luxury line trim vehicle, the satin, which I forgot to mention on the side, but it's the the side glass surround is also finished in the same satin. And it is again present on these uh, details on the bumper here. Overall, there's not that much to talk about when it comes to the, um, the 2 Series design. I do like the, the blade style light clusters and the fact that the, you may not be able to see it on camera, but the light is, um, is diffuse. I also like this um, detail here, this pattern. It's very cool. This car does not have a fake exhaust. Not even on the M Sport model do you get like a fake ornament. Whichever version of the 2 Series you opt for, all exhausts are going to be pointing downwards. 
so the trunk has supposedly grown on the new 2 Series by up to 90 liters. But comparing new and old 2 Series active tourers, I don't think that's the case. My tester, which is the mild hybrid, um, has a capacity of 415 liters. If it wasn't the mild hybrid and it was a non-electrified version, it would have been 470 liters, as you would have gotten more space under the, the fake floor here. It would have extended all the way to the edge of the seat. Fold everything down and space grows to 1,455 liters. And the fact that this opens so wide and is a fairly irregular shape means you should be able to slot your things very easily all the way back. It has a little knit here, so you can put some of your things and they don't roll around. You also have these handy D-rings here that you can tether stuff to. And you have two of them on the other side as well. On the other side, you have the illumination for the cargo area, a 12 volt power outlet, and this plastic thing, which looks like I could rip it out fairly easily. Overall, it is quite a roomy trunk and one that is a very, very usable shape, which I think is uh, very important, sometimes more important. Let's see what happens when we fold down the rear seats. You actually get quite a bit of space, as I will try to demonstrate. Could you use this vehicle for camping? Yeah, you definitely could. What is one of the most famous traits that uh, MPVs or people carriers have? Well, it's their cavernous modular interiors. And the 2 Series Active Tourer is no exception. It's not the biggest vehicle in the world. It's only like three centimeters longer and just a bit wider than the vehicle it replaces. But you do get a lot of leg room in the back. You get uh, individually sliding uh, bench seats. So there's a handle under the left seat and you can move both of these forward. And then there's another one under the right seat and you move just this one forward. So this is behind myself in my driving position and this is cavernous, man. Like I could tap dance under the, under the front seat. Ample leg room, ample knee room, headroom is excellent. Shoulder room also seems okay. I'm not sure you could fit three passengers here in the back, but it's remarkably cavernous. And even though this car has the optional black headliner, this is offset by the, the panoramic sunroof. This is actually a nice place to sit. You are reminded that this is a cheaper BMW by the fact that you only get two vents here in the, in the center and a couple of USB-Cs and that's pretty much it. So not a whole lot. Let's see what the armrest situation is like. Again, simple, effective and uh, a bit cheaper feeling than in other BMWs. Like these teeth that are supposed to hold your drink in they are not spring-loaded, they are just some pieces of rubber that are probably going to break through use. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh yeah. And because there's no quarter light here, the rear side glass doesn't go all the way down. And in this example, it is optionally tinted. You have very big door pockets. You could probably fit a 2-liter bottle inside here. Let's move to the front. Immediately upon entering the 2 Series Active Tourer, you notice that you sit quite high in this vehicle. And as you can imagine, I cranked my electric driver's seat all the way down. Honestly, I think this driving position is definitely higher than in some of BMW's current SUVs for sure. However, the flip side is you get really nice thigh support because you feel like you're sitting on a very comfy chair, but that's a compliment because this is more of a lounge on wheels than a sporty, slightly tall hot hatch. Although it does drive quite well. But once you do get used to the driving position, it's okay, it's nice. You get quite a good view, although the windscreen is actually quite small. Visibility is still great. You get this uh, front quarter light here that is uh, very good. It allows you to see the pedestrian that you would otherwise not have seen while they were crossing the crosswalk and they were hidden exactly by the A-pillar. The optional seats fitted to my luxury line tester are exactly the same as the ones on the M Sport pack. Exactly the same shape with these uh, shoulder things here and the adjustable thigh support. The new 2 Series no longer has a deep central cubby. 
in the armrest. You can still open it, although it is a bit counterintuitive that the button is on the right and it opens from the left. Inside here, you only get about this much in terms of depth and you can fit your car key, keys and coin. BMW has done this to, in part, make it look like the iX, the flagship, but also to give you this vast space underneath. And uh, it is supported only on one side. So there's this structural thing here, while on the driver's side, it is completely open. I do like the open pour wood on the dash and some of the textile material, for instance, here on the door. And I think only there on the door. Yeah, so there's, is it on the rear door? Yeah, it's also on the rear door. So there's a textile material that's very similar to the one in the iX. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's the same. I would have liked to see more of it, maybe. Just like they did in the iX. Here, the lower part of the dash is a hard plastic. So why not just cover it in this soft and pleasant um, fabric? The overall design is pretty good. You can't really fault it, at least visually, because it looks fantastic. The 2 Series Active Tour, from what I understand, comes as standard with the um, sport steering wheel, which is very sporty. It is inspired by the one in the iX, but it's not hexagonal, thankfully, because that made your hands sit at a weird angle. Whereas this is just a normal steering wheel, which is great. So there's a lot to talk about when it comes to the design of the dash. This car has a similar screen to the one in the iX. You get a 10-ish inch driver's display and a slightly larger 10 inch. I think this is 10.25 and this is 10.7 and this is the first BMW that no longer has a rotary control to, um, to move through the infotainment. This is a touchscreen only BMW. So even though the iX that I drove not long ago had the same version 8 of BMW's infotainment software, that still had a physical means for you to, to control things. The infotainment itself is definitely okay. It is similar to um, Android, I guess. Um, I'm still getting used to it. I really, really like how these vents are integrated. So you have one in the center, which is for the driver, and then two that are facing the passenger. And that's quite an interesting solution. So in the new 2 Series Active Tour, you no longer have a physical um, selector for the gearbox. It is now auto only, so it comes as standard with a 7-speed dual clutch, so they didn't need to um, run the linkages all the way to the engine. This is, a, you know, as you can imagine, an electronic thing, a switch. And it doesn't even have a parking position anymore. So you put it in drive, and then there's no, you know, you don't press on this to put it in park. As you can see, there's no park here. In order to put it in park, you have to press the parking brake button. BMW has also uh, moved the volume control to this console thing, and you can also move from one track to another. And in all new BMWs, whenever you see an icon with um, three lines, so for instance this one, it will bring up a menu. For the lights, just like in the, in the iX, you also have a button that takes you to a menu. And this is a bit annoying, and I have a problem with this, to be honest. You basically always keep your lights on auto, right? But what about when it's winter outside and you want to keep your engine running so that you can keep providing heat to the cabin, but you are parked on the side of the road and you don't want to keep your dipped beams on because you are going to blind oncoming cars and you're going to be a nuisance. What do you do then? Because if you press on the light menu thing, it pops this up. And if you press it, many of these options are grayed out and it says function currently unavailable. Why? I'm sure some BMW engineer has some sort of contrived explanation for this. So BMW allegedly could not fit this vehicle with one of those um, head-up displays that are projected onto the windscreen because it has something to do with the curvature of the screen or something, and they were forced to adopt this solution. So this car has given up on a lot of buttons with all those functions being relocated to menus and sub-menus within the, the infotainment. For instance, climate, you no longer have any buttons for the climate control, although you can uh, turn on front and rear demisting through a physical button, so that's nice. But other than that, 
all climate related functions are dealt with through the infotainment and if you have so for instance I have my heated seats here on the outer parts here you have fan speed and it works fairly well although I would have liked some haptic feedback to know that I've actually clicked something but if you have additional functions like a heated steering wheel for instance then you will have to scroll from one side to the other like in the iX where the not all the climate functions fit onto the screen and when it comes to the usability of the infotainment it is remarkably snappy the graphics are wonderful some of the best in the business for sure the digital gauge cluster is a very slim ultra ultra wide type screen as you would imagine the um, the graphics for the digital gauge cluster change when you put the vehicle in sport everything goes red and then if you put it in efficient it all goes blue and your rev counter is replaced with a power gauge and talking about the driving modes these are a source of frustration in the new 2 series and in any new BMW with the version 8 of its infotainment because in order to move through the various driving modes there's no longer a dedicated well there is a dedicated button but it just sends you to a menu so you press my modes here which is fairly convenient and then you have to extend your hand all the way to the screen the steering wheel also thankfully has physical buttons and is very easy to use it is another wonderful sporty steering wheel from BMW I did throw it into a few corners and it's certainly well I appreciate the sharpness of the steering but I did miss being able to control the the gears myself and the suspension is quite floaty and the car rolls significantly where I think this vehicle is at its best is cruising out of town maintaining a highway speed and just putting it on cruise control it has all the, the stuff you would expect so it maintains the distance to the vehicle in front I don't think it changes lanes for you but I might be wrong about that and when on the open road you really start to appreciate this car's soft suspension and understand why it is soft so when it comes to powertrain options you can currently choose between the 218i or the 220i and the range topping gas burning model is the 232i active tour which has the same b48 2 liter engine that powered the previous 220i bmw will also launch two plug-in hybrid versions of this vehicle the 225e x drive and the 230e x drive the lower powered of the two will have a combined output of 245 horsepower and the 230e is actually going to be quite peppy and the range topper for the 2 series active tour lineup and it's going to have 326 horsepower bmw has not yet confirmed the battery capacity for the plug-in hybrids or their stated range but it should be somewhere under 20 kilo hours probably 14 ish kilowatt hours on its own the three cylinder engine that powers this vehicle makes about 150 horsepower but boosted by the mild hybrid system that jumps to 170 horsepower and 280 newton meters of torque which is uh, around 8 horsepower less than the previous 220i with the 2 liter engine but the torque figure is the same however because this new vehicle is around 100 kilos heavier than the one it replaces and it is a bit down on power compared to it it is slower it's nearly a second slower to sprint to 100 kilometers per hour the sprint time increases from 7.3 seconds to 8.1 seconds and honestly on the move since you cannot uh, change gears yourself sometimes you are left waiting for the power especially if you're not in L mode that holds on to higher gears for longer I wouldn't call it underpowered because once the boost arrives and it does pick up it does pick up it's quick enough but I imagine that the 218i which is this exact same configuration in a slightly lower state of tune that's probably going to feel extra sluggish and I would advise against buying it 
my test chair today is fairly reasonably priced for a BMW for something with the propeller badge on its hood. It starts from around 33,000 euros and my tester is just over 50. And it's very well equipped with mood lighting and electric seats and uh, the sunroof and the almost 2,000 euro wheels and the three and a half thousand euro innovation pack and the Harman Kardon sound system, of course. Overall, I really, really like the BMW 2 Series Active Tour. It does all the things that people expect a crossover to do, only it does them better because you have more room in the back of this than in a BMW X1. It's probably even bigger than an X3 in here. And it's all because they uh, used the front wheel drive platform from the Mini lineup. And by using a platform that has a transversely mounted engine, you can have more greenhouse and more space dedicated to the passengers in a set wheelbase. Overall, this is a pleasant car, one you will definitely enjoy owning if you have a small family and you like to go on road trips or just pick them up from school. And if it's a nice day like today, you can lower the windows, put it in L mode and in sport mode as well, and listen to the blow-off valve and the turbo noises that this vehicle makes. It would have been nice to change gears yourself. So let's see how well I can overtake these people. Flooring it. So when it's on boost, it certainly does go. I mean, it does justice to the 220 badge. We're already way above the speed limit. If you want to buy a small crossover, don't and check this out first. At least have it on your short list of models that you are going to test drive and consider for your purchase. Because it's super good. And it's, um, it is proof that BMW does know how to make a practical and easy to live with vehicle. 